So welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Freelance Network podcast. We're a podcast by content creators for content creators, where we want to have conversations with interesting people and just talk about things within this universe, because I feel like there's a lot to talk about. And there's always so much. Universe is pretty big. Yeah. So as promised, we have brought on our first guest. We'd like to welcome Joe Petrelli. So Joe, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, guys. So excited. Joe and I met. It was uh, probably about a year ago now, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. So you graduated from Stockton in 2016. Mm-hmm. So I was taking a class at the time called Steadicam, and uh, our professor, Professor Ludovic, brought in a guest speaker, one of her former students. And you kind of just came into our class. You talked about freelancing. You talked about actually working within the field. And you talked about like appreciating school while you're in it. I thought it was a really great conversation. And one thing that I tried with you, which I've learned to do, is always send a follow-up email. Just if they give you a business card, they give you their email, just do it. Because I just emailed Joe, sent him a couple of my videos, and we went back and forth, chit-chatted about stuff. So it only made sense to bring him on the podcast because that's quite literally what we do here. So, Joe, why don't you tell us a little bit about you, about like your time in Stockton, and yeah. then where you're at now. Sure, and to kind of piggyback off that real quick, the whole follow-up thing. Um, you know, you were one of the only people who followed, one of two people who followed up, but followed up with your work. Um, and what was it? A couple weeks later, I brought you to help me yep. with the, uh, the, the Stockton video. lacrosse video, which got a ton of great, so much fun um, on that. feedback. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's the thing that you don't know what somebody's working on. It, it could be any, it could be anything, any project they might need somebody for. You don't, you have no idea. Um, so sending that follow, follow up email is always, um, one appreciated, especially from some someone like me who, you know, that was the first time I ever talked to a class. So, you know, I, I really didn't have a lot of experience in that, but to get the feedback, well, hey, I, I enjoyed your your talk and you said a lot of things that, you know, kind of vibed with me. And, you know, if you ever need help with something, here's some work I've done. Um, I have experience with this, this, and this. Um, you know, let me know and I'll definitely come out and help. And sure enough, you know, things lined up and, and I needed help with something. Um, but that could happen with anything. Um, so always following up the, I think the saying is the fortune is in the follow up, Uh, and that's like a cliche, but it's so true. And I say, I'm probably like too much into the follow up, but I always try and keep it, um, especially with like professional people that are in places that I want to be. I'll send them an email every other month, you know, with an update of stuff I've done in the sports field, if it's sports related, um, you know, it's getting me, you know, moving me towards a position that I want to be in that they're in. Um, and you know, sometimes they answer, sometimes they don't, but you know, it really doesn't matter. It's just getting in that habit because the one time the opportunity does come up, you need to be ready. Um, and that's kind of something I really believe in. And so far, um, anytime I followed up or, or cold emailed somebody, cold DM somebody on Instagram, um, there's been a lot of opportunities that's opened up. Um, so don't be scared to send that follow up one and don't be scared to reach out to people. Brands, big, huge brands that have thousands and thousands of followers, send them a DM. They have, I'm starting to learn now that they have lists of freelance videographers. Yeah. And especially in our area, the Philly area, um, Philly's heavy into like uh, like music videos, real estate stuff, corporate videos. But as far as like the, um, the you know, small brand videos, apparel brand, all that stuff, all those brands, they have lists and they're, they're looking for people. So get your name out there. And, if, and But the one thing you do need is you need work. Um, so that's something that I would, you know, recommend, but that was just kind of piggybacking yeah. off that. We can kind of go back to, oh, yeah, we, we can, I'm sure we'll revisit that. But, um, so I went to Stockton from, uh, 2012 to 2016. Um, I went through the communication program, uh, Represent. media production. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Um, and I had steady cam like you did. I all had all the classes you did. Um, I was in the media program all through high school. Um, I used to walk around with this big camera cart with, you know, back, which was with my, it was so fun. It was with my best friends. We used to do little hallway interviews and edit it together and show sounds, it on like, sounds a lot like the high school TV. High yeah. School. I mean, it's, it's, you know, that was, but that was where I developed kind of my love for just talking to people and telling a story through an edit, even if it was something like, you know, you're, what do you want for Christmas? Like, you know, something simple like that, but, um, you know, just showing something to people that they, um, you know, enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where that started. Um, when I went here, uh, I played lacrosse. I played lacrosse where I was like active on the team, uh, for two years. My junior year, I dealt with a lot of injuries. Um, so I was sidelined for most of the actual season. Um, and then my senior year, I had to make a tough choice and not play. Um, but I was always involved in the program. Uh, you know, they welcomed me in the whole time. I met some of my best friends there. Um, so I was a part of the team the whole time I was at Stockton and, 
you know, what Coach Zuloff taught me, what all my the captains and upperclassmen taught me, uh, what my friends taught me were all things that I carry within my professional life um, and just really matured me. Um, so that's, you know, the why lacrosse is really important to me and sports are really important to me because I've played, I, I've been, I've played lacrosse for, you know, a long time and just what sports have given me has really helped develop me. And I think telling the story of athletes is something um, that's, you know, so awesome. There's so many different stories to tell coaches, players from, you know, peewee football all the way up to the NFL. There's, you know, stories from, from the top to the bottom. Definitely. Um, and, but, you know, what I say when I come in and I talk to classes is that, um, you know, I don't think I took advantage of what I had in college as much as I would have liked to. And now looking back, it was such uh, a, a silly thing. Um, you know, I was, you know, I was working all the time. I was working at Dick Sporting Goods. Um, I was delivered pizza for a local uh, pizzeria. So I was working like seven days a week on top of lacrosse. And lacrosse season came around. I would just, you know, be playing lacrosse. So, um you know, my time wasn't being allocated, you know, as effectively as it should have been um, to, to get myself to where I want to be professionally. And I think that was something that I try and tell people now. Um, and, and I also like to say that I'm not coming from this place where I'm, you know, some super successful videographer who's, you know, has all these opportunities and done all this great stuff and is making all this money. Um, you know, I just, I, I'm doing video full time. Um, and that's something that a lot of people can't say that they do. And I think I've been, you know, the stars have aligned in a way where I'm, I have had an opportunity to be able to do that. And now speaking to how I've gotten here, um, and how I'm progressing to where I want to go, uh, that's something that I hope is valuable for other people. So that's kind of why, um, I like to come on things like these and I, and I like to talk to classes, um, and just network with people too. Like, I don't know where you're going to be working in five years. I don't know where you're going to be working in five years. It could be somewhere where I want to work. Who knows? Exactly. You do not yeah. know. Like, yeah. and, and I don't care, you know, people who are super judgmental and think that, you know, they're so awesome and, you know, they, they don't have to, what, what they might consider being punching down, which isn't even the case at all because there's so many talented creators that are younger. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, especially in the sports world. It, I know so many people on Instagram who, who do lacrosse-specific content, 20,000 followers. They're, I think they're 19. Um, and they literally just go to every high school, big high school game, every college game that'll let them on the field. Some of them don't even have tripods. They'll shoot handheld, and they'll come up with these awesome edits that get all this traction. It's all about the hustle. And, and, and yeah. they're just nonstop. Um, and they have so they have more talent than I do. Like, it, and, and that's, that's what kind of keeps me hungry to keep pushing and keep um, doing what I'm doing. And, you know, while I don't, focus on that i i know that that's there and that's what they're th that's a level that some people are bringing to it um so that's kind of the brain dump of you know myself i guess or the the spiel so at least the backstory yeah the backstory yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean there there's I, I could go on for you know a long time but you know i'm sure there's a million things we can circle back to and stuff oh, that yeah. i've been doing um but yeah that's kind well, of what i have one going of the on. things I, I really wanted to ask you about so like our name of the podcast is the freelance network mm -hmm. So I feel like kind of we talked about networking, you know, like meeting people because like this is a networking example coming back, you know, but not a, not a lot of people know what it's like to start off freelancing. So why don't you talk? Because I mean, Will's about to get into that. Yeah. And like Will's also sports stuff, yeah. too. Now, I've been doing a little freelance work myself, but yeah. like you've been doing it for a couple of years. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about like what it's like to freelance and just kind of any I mean, if you have any questions to throw them out there. Yeah. Sure. Um, so freelancing is definitely not what I had originally thought it was. And that was, that's been interesting to, to learn more. Um, the one thing that I did when I first graduated, um, a, a little backstory, when I first graduated, um, I worked at Dick Sporting Goods all throughout um, college, and I had an opportunity to come up where um, I got put through this thing called the sales manager training program, which was very selective program. There's only 12 of us in the whole country. Um, we went through this, you know, leadership training, um, you know, how to be a leader within the organization. Um, everybody got placed in really high volume stores that had a lot of stuff going on. Um, and I was in this training program. I was flying out to Pittsburgh and meeting with all these executives and doing all these presentations on business and how to, you know, uh, how to lead people and, and, and all these different things. Um, and I was in the store that 
I was managing or that I was one of the managers of was um, in, in Freehold, New Jersey. And uh, they were, I think, you know, they, that's a store that does like 18 to 20 million in volume, which is like for Dick Sporting Goods is insane. It's a ton. Um, yeah. And it's a ton. And being one of the, you know, three assistant store managers there, having, you know, in our store, there's 50, you know, part-timers, there's 10 full-timers that are all in a supervisor position. Uh, and then I'm, you know, the manager that oversees some of them. Um, but that whole process to me kind of built my business acumen, my, my maturity, um, and really helped me gain the confidence to dive into freelance and just have the, the confident mindset that I'd be able to do whatever I want to do. And there, you know, there's nobody stopping me, um, because I had seen success in that. And I, and I ended up leaving that position, uh, to come work at Stockton. So that was a kind of a, a, a hard thing, but to, to tie it back to the, the freelance thing, when I first graduated, um, as I was going through this training program, I had always said, well, I'm doing this now and I understand what this is going to be and how this is going to be a good opportunity. But when I, I need to make sure that I'm always angling myself towards video somehow, so whether I'm doing videos on the side, whether I'm asking dicks how they do, what, what do they do for their video? Do they have a corporate team that does their video? Whatever it may be, I just know that that's kind of in the, in the long term. Um, so I bought this, this course called full-time filmmaker, which I'm sure, uh, you know, you see all over online now because Parker is all over the place. But I was one of the first group of people in that course. Um, and I'm really active in the Facebook group now. Um, but that course really taught me a ton about how to run a freelance business, um, how to just the ins and outs of your camera, lighting, audio, like you from top to bottom video, just the word video, like business in general, that kind of, you know, taught me the the real ins and outs of it about the freelance life. Um, and that was what really just kind of started to give me the confidence to start to do freelance stuff. Um, I did my first wedding that following summer because uh, I had invested in a DSLR. I had invested in a glide cam, uh, to tw a nice little 24 to 70 zoom lens, which I still use now for almost everything. Um, and I did the first wedding for free. And I, I spent hours editing this thing. I, I, that was the hardest I've ever worked on a video and ended up being like a 10 minute, you know, edit, which I think came out, you know, pretty good. I was happy with the result. Um, but you know, I did it for free, sent it to the, to the couple. Um, and they, you know, I got all this great feedback. Everybody loved it, which, you know, felt good. But then I got a check in the mail for, for $500. And I was like, Whoa, I was like, wait, I was like, did I just get paid for like a video that like, like that's it in, hits different that's like in yeah i was like yeah. wait a minute like in, in like a little envelope too i was like this is crazy so that was like the like in my head where i was just like oh my gosh someone thinks that what i made for them is worth money so yeah. that's like a huge like it sounds simple but in like the creative world that's like th what you want well until it actually happens and then it happens and you're not even asking for it so you're like yeah. okay I've been lining these things up and now it's happening. It happened and I just kind of manifested. And I was like, all right, well, now I really need to focus on moving towards video. Um, I did a couple videos for, um, you know, a restaurant. Uh, and then in that fall, this, um, this position here that I'm at in Stockton opened up. Um, and you know, here I do the audio video support for a lot of the events. Uh, but we also act as, you know, full-blown video producers on marketing projects with, you know, all different departments uh, for different events, um, you name it. But we, and we get, we have a full studio. We get to use all, you know, awesome equipment. So um, once that came up and while all that wedding stuff was happening, the full-time filmmaker, I'm in that like Dick Sporting Goods leadership world, flying the pits, like doing all this crazy stuff. So it was a very like, crazy time well, it sounds like a juggling act of uh, like the yeah, yeah i can't even it's hard to even put in the words how much of a of a you know juggling act and how i had to stay in the right mindset and make sure that i knew where i was going and and you know what i was doing um and so and actually when it, that fall um that i got hired at stockton i i played my first alumni game at stockton i tore my achilles so I, you know, I had that going on. So, you know, it, it was just a very uh, taxing but maturing process where I was like, because, you know, then because that because that was like I'm at, you know, Dick Sporting Goods. I'm seeing a lot of success in this. 
but I'm having all these nice video things come up and then I tear my Achilles. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I'm like sitting in my bed. I'm not going to be able to walk for like 12 weeks. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I need, like, why this, I need to do, I need to change something and, and make sure. And that's when the Stockton job came up. And I was like, you know what? This, this is, I'm going for it. Cause I wasn't, I wasn't a hundred percent going for it. Cause I didn't really know what it was. I didn't know what I was going to be doing. Um, and I was like, I, I just have to go for it. And I literally, cr- I had my dad drive me up to Freehold. I crutched in my store that had dumped all this time in the training me. Uh, and I sat right in front of my manager that had trained me for the last you know year. I was his first trainee. We had an awesome relationship. Uh, like I said, I had a lot of success in the company. Um, and I just told him I was leaving. And you know that was a just another part of the maturing process that um, led me to this mindset that I'm in now Mm -hmm. with the whole freelance thing. So to tie all of that into just the freelance in general, your mindset is like, it's like 95% of everything. I would say it's like 95% is your mindset. The technical of everything is like the 3% and then everything else you can like dump in that 1%. Yeah. Because it has to be, because you can tie mindset into working, to to networking, to uh, grinding out emails to people, to look for new clients, um, you know, just figuring out what niche you want to be in. Uh, you know, that's all in mindset, I, in in my mind. Um, so, you know, that that's kind of a lot to unpack, to unpack, like, and, and it's definitely hard to say, well, this is how you get into freelancing. Because really, freelancing is like you're saying, I'm the business. And I'm just gonna make things for people, and then they're gonna pay me. <laughs> That's it. That's freelancing. Yeah. So you t- you can handle the rest. Like you yeah. you handle how you want to deal with your clients, how you want to email people. What does your business look like? Uh, what does your work look like? What's your style? Is your style like somebody else's? Those are all questions that you kind of need to ask yourself, um, and then you make those decisions because it's your business. Uh, and that was something that I was big on is not being like everybody else in in the in the video space and that was something that I was big on and I always and I still feel like kind of helps me because like right now you see Sony cameras are huge everybody Sony DSLR Sony's coming out with you know every type of DSLR for all these different price ranges now they're all mirrorless all too. mirrorless yeah. all shooting 4K all shooting 120 frames yippy skippy like I I and I was like everybody's getting that I'm going with a Canon uh, and I have I have a C100, which is it's a good, it's a good camera, and I invested a lot into it. But it's a Canon cinema camera that not a lot of people use, and it has a super 35 sensor that a lot of a lot of people don't have. It's a totally different look. So when you see my work compared to Johnny's work down the street, mine definitely looks different. And most and and I know how to make it look good, which is another part of everything. And and that's someone who they see my work and they're going, okay, this is not what I've seen. So why is this different? Maybe I maybe I want to reach out to him and see like this is this is somebody I want to work with instead of like you know your standard mirrorless digital look, which is not bad. And a lot of people know how to do really good work with that. So I'm not hating on that. I'm just saying yeah, that I think was that's the thing is like everything looks a little different. But the point, like you said, it's like you are showing why yours is different yes. and why it's appealing to somebody. Yeah, because like I mean all of us could get be given a camera and just try to do something, but we're all gonna end up doing the same or a little bit different. Like with the final product, how we edit it, how we color it, everything. So, I mean, I think that's a definitely really interesting thing to think about. So, yeah, and I think a lot of people don't don't think about that. They're like, well, and and that like a lot of people get hung up on like the camera specs and like I need it to shoot in 1080 at 120 frames because I want that super nice slow motion shot and like all that is is nice, but if you don't know how to expose your shot correctly or color correct it or like how to use a LUT or like any of that, how to set your white balance correctly, how to light something correctly. If you don't have all that stuff down, let's take take a step back. You want to know, you need to know your the technical stuff, how I said that that's like that. If, if the mindset's 95, the technical is 3%. Because if you, if you know how to work, like I know people that I can give a $500 camera to and they can make it look like a $6,000 camera shot it. That's because they know how to light it. They know how to expose it. They know how to give it a creative look if they want. 
Um, and that's all just from understanding everything and just grinding out, like literally grinding out YouTube videos and talking to people. Like that's, yeah. that's how you learn stuff like that. It's yep. not like you can, and, and going out and shooting stuff too. Like that's yeah. obviously well, when I went out and shot with you for the lacrosse video, which we'll get to soon. It was like, I was a little nervous cause like I'd seen your videos. I had seen like the footage and like, I didn't want to like lower the quality cause you brought me in to get those extra shots. But it was like when I was out there, you were like, all right, this is my camera. This is how I like to use it. And it was cool to see just a different way to how to use something I've known how to use for so long. So like that was one thing that I really liked was like, was like, whoa, like I've been holding this camera, been using a camera very similar for how many years? And like Joe showed me how to do this, how to do that. And like then I start to apply it to my stuff. Yeah. So and that and that's, you know, that's how it works. Like when you're when you're working with somebody else, everybody has a different way of doing things. Mm hmm. Um, and that's definitely what I've learned, you know, working at Stockton and just working in, in my freelance and talking to all of these other filmmakers. Um, cause in that full-time filmmaker group, they have a Facebook group. And now I think the group has like something like 7,000 people. It's wow. insane. And they're all people who are not, everybody's active. Not everybody's even gone through the whole course, but there are people who have purchased the course that are looking to eventually become full-time in, you know, freelancing or working for a company or, you know, whatever it may be. But they post, you know, videos every day. They post, you know, what do you think about the new Canon camera, the new Sony camera, you know, all, they post stuff like that every day. And it's just valuable to be able to see that and see what other people are doing, what they're using for their work. Um, and like you said, when you're actually in the in the field using it. It's how, I feel like that's how when we know, like when we actually learn things is like when you need to and you, when you need to figure out like push comes to shove, you're like, all right, I need to figure this out right now. Yep. And it's time to do it. So well that yeah, and that's another like you need to be able to and this is a big thing for freelancers in my opinion. So this will be a nice little tip, I think. You need to be able to shoot in manual in any situation and you need to understand when you're flicking this and clicking this and changing this setting, what that's doing to your picture, because that is how that's that's how you take your work from you know, here to here. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge jump. It's a huge jump. Um, so that's, and, and that's understanding all the, all the tech stuff. Um, and that's something I really like to emphasize because I don't think a lot of people do like it's, it's just not, not a lot of people understand like what I was talking about before. Um, it's like and, actually take the time to learn your camera. Yeah, learn. Yes. Learn every, I know every single menu in all of my cameras. I can go to do whatever, like I can change the input gain on any of my channels on my C100. I can change the color profile, like you, like you name it, and I can change it immediately. Um, and that's that needs to be second nature. And that's before you even go out to shoot. And shooting is, that's what you do. So that's like the, that's the most important, but you need to have that, that confidence that you can make those adjustments. Yeah. Um, so that's really important for freelancers too. Um, I hope I answered your question. I think I, I, no, I definitely. Yeah. Well, that's the thing though, is that it's such an open-ended question where yeah. I feel like anytime we ask somebody, tell us about freelancing, it's going to be their experience, yeah. what they've learned about it. Cause that's the whole point of freelancing. You're like you said, you are the business Yeah. and everybody like, obviously it's the same in the sense that you get hired by people to make videos, but like in the, it's just everybody does it a little different, and that's why, why we want to bring people on because you're telling us your experience. I, I mean, I feel like I've learned something, and you definitely have. Oh, yeah, I definitely learned something yeah. because no one's going to go through, like, the same experience, yeah. like, twice. Exactly. So, and, I mean, it's just, like, sports and sports, so, like, you can take some notes from him because he's actually worked a lot with sports, which yeah. I think we should talk about those lacrosse videos next. Sure. Cause, yeah. Well, like you said, you were very involved with Stockton's lacro lacrosse team. Yeah. And that's how we met, too, was through after I followed up with you, you asked me to help you shoot a video for mm -hmm. them. So that was very fun because lacrosse is a fast-paced sport. Yeah, it is. Very fast-paced. Yep. And you were, like, telling me, like, the field and, yeah. like, where to not stand, <laughs> where I'd get barreled over yeah. by somebody. But, I mean, Will and I watched – or I showed Will the championship video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he and brought me to your website. I don't know if you want to, like, shout that out. Yeah, it, it's quick. it's JoePatrilliFilms.com. And very, the Instagram. Yeah, and the Instagram is Joe Petrilli Films, uh Facebook's Joe Petrilli Films. And just got a new update on the website, so definitely check that got out. Got a it's, fresh look. Yeah, fresh look, and I, I love it. So Yeah, um, we'll definitely link that stuff in the YouTube description, and then when we post this on Instagram and Facebook, we'll throw your names out there too. Cool. So Cool. But yeah, so like I said, we watched the championship video, and we watched the family video specifically, because I thought it was a fantastic idea to interview all the senior and junior captains right away. And I'm getting a phone call, of course. But... Um, <laughs> 
So it was a great idea to interview all of them like right away and the coach before the season because then as they went on their championship run, spoiler alert, shout out to Stockton's yeah. men lacrosse team. They won the championship. So, yeah, represent. Yep. But it was very cool to see that process of like you film their interviews, you ask them their expectations of the season. I'm pretty sure, right, right Will, like every captain was like, I want to win a championship. Yeah, I want to win a championship. Yeah. So I thought that was very cool to see that. I mean, like what, what did you take away from it? I mean, I liked how, like, it was just shot because you got, like, everything between the players being interviewed. You got stuff at night. You just kind of gave, like, the feel for, like, everyone. If you did play lacrosse, you got that feel. If you never played lacrosse, you got that feel. And you got the feel for the players because every person that's ever played a sport and all that, they want, they're hungry, they want to win a championship. And you're able to capture that and, ca and put it into film. And I thought it was, you know, it was really good. Yeah, and that's, and that's kind of what... Um, you know, Coach Zuloff is is uh one of the best coaches I, I think in the country. You know, by by far, um, and he instills that in in all the players from like from top to bottom. It doesn't matter if you never touch the field, you want to win a championship because you're there on the practice field. You're still grinding with everybody. Um, and and being able to and me understanding that when I'm telling that story of of just hard work of of the culture of the team. Um, you know, that's something that, you know, I wanted to make sure that I focus in on. Um, and that was a big part of the edit that they all, they all, and I, and I really knew they were all going to say that. Like I didn't, I knew going into it when I asked that question, what were your goals for the season? Yeah. I knew they were all going to say they wanted to win a championship because that's been the goal of the program for forever. It's, you know, that's just what it is. Um, and our coach says, you always go, always go one and oh, and everything you do one and oh, there's no, and then, and then just you know, everything resets, you take on the next conflict and you go want to know. And it was the same kind of mentality that he's always instilled in everybody. Um, and the crazy thing about that whole experience is that they won the championship. You know, you I, the I right had time. no, I have, I had no idea they were going to win the championship when I did that first video. Um, and I knew I was going to go out to all their home games and, and record them um, and make highlights for them. That's all I told myself from the beginning of the season um, and that's what I did. And then sure enough, the season started to develop. We started, you know, playoffs. We, we ended up beating Montclair here. Um, I never beat Montclair when I, when I was at Stockton. Um, and you know, we beat Montclair here. We beat Kane. Next thing we know, we're, we're in the championship game. And with that, stop, my videos are getting more exposure. So my first video has like 250 views. Second one is like 500, 800, a thousand. Then we're getting close to playoff times. We're looking at like 8,000, 15,000. Like one of them has 20,000, I think, views, which is crazy. Like I, I had never made a, a sports video like that before. Um, and I think the first The Family video got, I think, like 5,000 views or something like that on Facebook and then a couple uh, thousand on, um, on Instagram. But regardless, just getting that exposure and having it you know, keep building up to what ended up being the championship – was just crazy and and really recording that was just so so overwhelming and really like hammered home like I already knew what I wanted to do and I already knew that you know sports cinematography was the direction I wanted to go into but that championship game was like brought everything everything home and that was just and and being a part of the program knowing how hard everybody works and I knew I know some of those players personally like they're my friends um, and record, and I, and I know I can only imagine what they're going through. Um, in, in that, you know, in that feeling of that championship and, and recording that happening and they were down, they were down four at half. Um, and then I think they might have, uh, Mont I think they might've went up, uh, Montclair might've went up five before Stockton started to make a comeback and they end up winning by three. Yeah. And everybody's going insane. I'm, I'm going insane behind the camera. Like it's just such a, such a crazy experience and then when i was like all right this is actually this actually is probably going to happen and uh and then i have all the footage and i remember just getting in my car after and i was like oh my god like this is this having this season in in my portfolio just as that i documented this could like be it could get me so many different jobs which it ended up doing um but then i was like i have to you know hammer home this edit 
Um, and there's, uh, which I think you nailed. By yeah. The way. And, and I, and I definitely was happy with the result, which usually I'm not of my edits because you like, you know, yeah. I, I definitely, I, I put a lot of work in the things, but as creatives are, you're always your biggest ne critic, never yeah. satisfied, always the biggest critic. But yeah. this was like one of the first videos where I was like, I'm happy with the result. And I think it based on what I shot, it could not be better. Um, and you know, and I just, and I did it in a different way. That was the that was another risk I took is I did it in a different way that I did any of my other videos, any my the other playoff video I didn't like I gave this like a more it was you know cinematic like ambience in the background. Well, it and reminded me a lot of like NFL films work. That's when that's what I was trying to go for. Yeah, like, just you like know, that. It's like the it's like taking a story that could be a movie but using like the real footage, yes. the real people. And telling that that's one of my favorite parts about your work is that you manage to tell these stories in very real ways. Cause like none of this is made up. Like Stockton actually won the championship. Yeah. All those captains, they were real people. Like it wasn't like they said that months ago, they said exactly. that they wanted to do it months ago and now it actually happened. And it happened. Yeah. And you just happened to be there recording all of the it. The whole thing, the whole season. And I think that, you know, that, uh, more like cinematic style. I think on Instagram, you see a lot of like the, hype videos with like you know yeah. all the new like you know rap songs all these like fancy transitions and you know zooms and and all these different transitions i'm definitely more of like uh tell the story have some impactful music and you tell you 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 hit home through the edit as opposed to making it flashy by like you know these plugins and and stuff like that 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 has its place in a lot of different places in a lot of different areas but when you're doing a video like that you have to be more especially knowing what the situation was and, and how they got there and, and what that meant for the program, um, what that meant for coach, what that meant for all the players, all the seniors. Um, I mean, I remember, I remember playing Montclair and, and losing uh, in the playoffs at Montclair and then like, like smacking on the locker room and, you know, screaming at us and, and all, and like those, those memories happen to every, like all the players. And, and that is what they carry into this game. And, you have to deliver a more emotional, impactful film at the end because that's what it is. It's obviously it's it's you know you're exciting and it's a big sports game and you know you have that excited excitedness about it, but you have to hit you have to hit it in an emotional way because that's really what it was. It was an emotional, uh, huge moment for a program that I'm sure is now going to skyrocket. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's kind of, you know, and that's what I had to deliver on in the edit. And, you know, I, I, and I think I did. And that was, you know, that's, that's just one of the things about freelance too, is, you know, that just, I did all that for free. You know, I didn't, I went there with my, my camera, my tripod and I shot all of it. And now it's led to jobs where I'm getting paid for. So that, that's another thing about freelance. So, you know, we can talk about doing free work and, and stuff like that. Sometimes sacrificing your time, just knowing it'll create yeah. an opportunity yeah. in the future. You, you know, if, if, you, if you don't have a body of work, you have to figure out a way to do it. Because there's too many people out there now that have a video portfolio and can say that they, you know, know how to do video and here's work that I've done. And there's too many people that are reaching out to everybody trying to get work that you going and saying, hey, I also have a camera, but I you know, and then they're obviously going to ask, well, what, what do you have any work here? You say no. It's nine times out of ten. Now, if you're going to grind and reach out to a thousand people, you'll probably get a yes. But nine times out of ten, it's going to be a I, you don't have any work, so sorry. Yeah. Um. So a lot of people, you know, hate the free to fee is what is what you know they kind of call it the free to fee method, but um, I think it has value. You need to you need to understand it and or go out and shoot your own stuff. And then you have a portfolio. If you want to do brand videos, take your backpack and shoot a brand video about your backpack. Like you can do anything like a pen. Like it, it's literally anything. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be, you don't have to have a business to go out to, to it helps. But... It, yeah. It, it does help. And it actually, then you can get interviews and tell a story and do out. But if you don't have anything, at least just make a video, do something. You can send it to somebody. Um, and that's something that I didn't do that I wish I would have done. Um, so again, I'm not coming from a place where I'm like, oh, you know, I was sitting in my dorm making backpack videos for, you know, 10 hours a day in college. <laughs> Cause that's not what I was doing yeah. at all. Uh, and you know, that's, but looking back, that's the advice that I would give. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the long spiel about the, the sports thing. But if you have any questions or, you know, I'd be more than happy to, to answer them. Fire away, Will. <laughs>
I, fe- um, I feel like you got something to say. I'm sure there's a lot. I've been kind of uh, brain dumping. I don't know. I just got like bombarded <laughs> with like all this stuff. So yeah. it was just like it's overwhelming. A lot. I'm no, like, for sure. I'm trying to like digest this stuff. Of course. Just like someone like me, I want to get into like sports stuff. I run my own sports podcast. Mm-hmm. I love it so much. I've interviewed, you know, a couple people on there. Like video or like interview producing type thing? Um, Just, I don't know. I kind of like contact them. I like bring them in for like an interview. Mm-hmm. It's usually like over Skype. I've interviewed like E Rock, Big Eagles okay. guy. Um, I was supposed to interview, I interviewed this one guy, loyal NY Jet fans on Twitter. He's like this big Jet guy. He goes all this stuff. I mean, he's like a verified account. Yeah, yeah he's like yeah. a verified account. Cool. Yeah. Like, just any advice for like someone that wants to do sports and kind of get their foot in the door? What what can you do for that? Because you also, it, what you told me yesterday, it was more like you didn't work for the Premier Lacrosse League, mm-hmm. but you worked with them and like were hired by a company who worked with them. Yeah. So I mean, they're they're growing like crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, pro it, lacrosse is on the rise. So yeah, and they're they're definitely on the rise. And I worked with one of their uh, their partner brands. They actually, it's the the uh, the brand that makes the goal and they make the ball that they use called yeah. Wolf Athletics. Um, and that was from DMing the brand on, and, I, and they, they were coming to uh, Red Bull Arena, and I was like, "Hey, I'm a videographer. Here's all this work I've done, all the Stockton stuff I sent them." Got to drop the links. Um, and I was <laughs> like, "If there's anything you need, uh, I'd love to come out to the event, cover you guys, make a little short, you know, video for you. Um, and if there's any highlights you want of the game, like I'll come in and shoot stuff for the game." Um, and they ended up taking me up on it. Um, and they, you know, and I got to go to Red Bull and, you know, shoot the event, make a, um, event video for them. And then I made some highlights of the actual game itself. Um, and that was just from DMing them. Um, which goes back to what, which goes back to what we were talking about. about. You just have to, you, you have to have the confidence to go out and reach out to people. It's, it's hard. I'm like, a lot of people consider me like a confident person, but it's, I'm really deep down. I'm not, but I just like have to tell myself that I have to be. There's no, there's literally no other choice. Like, you have no other choice other than to be confident. So if you're not a confident person, it's okay. Like you can be be not confident when you're like at home, like you know, just hanging out. That's fine. But when you're talking about like your own work, or at least uh, not when you're talking about your own work, because it's not like I come and say, "Oh, I have the best videos ever. Here they are. Look at them. Uh, please hire me. I deserve it." It's just, no, here is my work. You're confident in at least showing them it. Um, you know, for what you're doing, I would I would say start local. Like, you're at Stockton, and you have yeah. this. I'd be going to every team. Every team, captains, who who won NJAC Rookie of the Week last week for tennis, who won NJAC Rookie of the Week the week before that in volleyball. Interviewing for 10 minutes like this or – or you know what in any capacity and throw it up online. Then you have a YouTube a YouTube video that you, or a YouTube link of your channel um, that you can send. And if it's your personal one or if you have a show, you know whatever. Um, however you want it to be presented, but at least you'll have um, you know a portfolio of interviews that you've done with college athletes. You know mm-hmm. they're college athletes. Stockton is a great school that has great athletes that get awesome accolades that do awesome things in the community. Um, so. Start like start local, um, and even are you like from, are you from the area or? Well, I'm from Tom's River. So okay, kind like 40, kind of forty minutes. Away. Yeah, um, but I mean, again, that the Stockton thing, and and most of the athletes like Stockton, you know, the athletics department does, um, you know, write a lot of articles and gives good exposure to their athletes and stuff like that. But there's not a lot done like in that capacity where they're being interviewed um, on a on a Stockton show, and a lot of them like have Instagrams and like they'll see that you're from Stockton. Um, just reach out to them, reach out to 30 of them and maybe five answer. Um, but at least that's five interviews that you have that you didn't have before. And then um, maybe the other 25 see it and are like, Hey, that was actually and they all pretty wanted, cool. Yeah. And the next week, the end Jack rookie of the week's reaching out to you. Cause they're like, Hey, I won. Are you interested in interviewing me? You know, because those, those people all like the interviews are not only beneficial to you, but they're beneficial to them. You're giving them a platform. doesn't matter if it gets 10 or 20 views. Most of them don't know how to record an interview and put it on YouTube. So you know how to do that. That's a skill that you know that you are, you know, not monetizing, but you're, um, you're providing value to them. Um, and that's like, you know, when you're, when also another thing, and you hear this a lot from all your, you know, Gary V's and your, you know, all, all your different, (laughs) (laughs) um, you know, Tim Ferriss, Tony Robbins, and not really Tony Robbins, but a lot of the entrepreneurial guys is when you're reaching out to people, you need to be providing them value. But, what I like to say with that is that 
there's so many people that listen to Gary Vee now and Tim Ferriss and all of those, uh, the, the, the Gary V's copy and paste Gary V's everywhere um, that everybody's doing the, Hey, I want to provide you value. Here's my service. Do you want to work with me? It needs to be in a different way. Like you need to think of like, Hey, I, you know, uh, I'm at Stockton. I'm, I'm trying to grow. Um, you know, my, I'm, I'm a producer. I like to interview athletes. Um, I'm just looking to bring people on my show that I've been working on. Um, I haven't launched anything yet, but I'm looking to get my, um, uh, my introductory 10 episodes out. Like, it doesn't matter if it is or not. Like they, they don't know. And, um, and, and you just say that and be like, Hey, would you be interested, uh, in coming on the show? You're not saying you're going to provide them value, but they'll understand that you are. Um, and, and if they're, and if they don't, through the then you can follow up again and be like um you know i'm willing to do this for free i think it's a great opportunity we, i'd love to get your story out out there about the game you had last week um and your experience playing at stockton simple as that um and just send that message to every just go on the you can go on the roster online they have them on athletics on the athletics website um and you like the monmouth is an hour away like there is now now when you get like to that level a lot of them already have like their radio stations but you never know like if you really want to get crazy with dming people you can and who knows you might find the one person who hasn't gotten reached out to about any uh an interview yet um and you know you can go out and interview them you never know um so that would be my advice but um does that like resonate with you or do you think that'd be something that would like you know you know just help me like grow and kind of get like my name out there yeah hopefully trying to get it into a different way that most people have it yeah do you do you want to do more of like a interview or do you like more like are you more interview producer style or are you more like camera guy cinematographer type thing i'm more like in front of the camera i want to like you know just be like in front of the microphone either you know describing you know what's going on in the field or even just sitting down with someone just talking and I think that's a good way. I think that's a great I think, starting point. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the DMing the Stockton athletes is a is a great way. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually producing right now that I've just finished the first episode of um, a documentary series for uh, Stockton Athletics. I'm, I'm actually working with the athletics department now for my job at Stockton. Nice. Um, and I did, you know, a 15 minute, uh, I'm doing four or 15 minute episodes about all the fall sports. And cool. um, I, I did 30, 30 interviews and like, three or four days uh that i'm now going through and chopping everything up and adding all the b-roll and and doing all that stuff but they're very like the athletics department is very willing and and really the especially if you're at stockton they the athletes can just go to you and just do the interview it's you're, you're they're just helping you you know you guys are just doing a show it's not anything um you know anything crazy so i think that would be that'd be my advice and i and i think it would be effective too because stockton has been a great uh, all my videos that I've done, they've all, like everybody shared. Like some videos that have like hundreds of shares that I've that, and I and I put it on my story like one time, and I say share it please, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then people just start sharing it, and the yeah. next person sees, it and they start sharing it. And, I mean, if it works, and yeah. just for just for the you know the lacrosse team, and you know who knows if that was like men's soccer or, or a men's basketball player that everybody loves. Yeah, if it's something, if it's a person that a lot of people love, and you can get like a minute clip, uh, and just toss it up on Instagram or something like that's all like stuff you can do too. like just make little like, you know, micro content, little, little micro pieces of your interview. Yeah. Um, and throw it up on Instagram. Then that gets starting to share. And then you got people from other schools contacting you and, and, uh, then you're no, you, you got the ball rolling and you're just kind of, you're taking off, but it's definitely, it's, you just got to go do it. That's the, that's the main thing. So that'd be my advice. All right. Yeah. Well, I think this was a great interview. I yeah. think that we learned a lot. And also, you just got to expose yourself more because that's the thing is you're a Stockton grad. I'm a Stockton grad. He will be a Stockton grad. Cool. Cassie will eventually be a Stockton grad. So I think it was a, I think it was a great talk. And very, we want to thank you a lot for being our first guest on the podcast. Too. Glad yeah, to be thank here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And also, one more time, drop your social medias sure. and your stuff for everybody. Absolutely. So uh, it's Joe Petrilli Films on Instagram, Facebook, JoePetrilliFilms.com. Um, and on JoePetrilliFilms.com, you can see under the contact page, you can see all my social media stuff. So if you just go to JoePetrilliFilms.com, that'd probably be the, get the, the best done. spot. Yeah. And then you can see my video work and my photography work. And if you're out there and you want to do work together, you know, send me a message. If you, um, are a freelancer in the area or from anywhere and you want to work together or like, you know, do you need any help, any questions or anything? Like, let me know. I so. mean, that's how I help. Yeah. I reached out to you. Absolutely. So. 
Yeah, so we'll drop that in our uh, YouTube video link as well. Cool. And if you want to follow us, we never really said our social media. We got to yeah. get better at that. It's um, for the Freelance Network podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And then you can listen to us on Spotify, iTunes, and Spreaker. Yes. So I just want to say thank you again to Joe. You're thank welcome. you so much. And thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. And we'll see you next time.